Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you are returning um, to watch these videos every Sunday, a warm welcome, an equally warm welcome to you. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Um, as it's a free way to support the channel and really um, um, gets the video out there uh, to the traders that really need it. And our trade process is a combination of fundamental and technical analysis. So we apply fundamental analysis principles to establish directional bias and apply technical analysis, which is supply and demand strategies to time trade entries, establish profit targets and risk management. So let's get into the uh, the week ahead and um, things to really kind of uh, watch for uh, this week. Let me just zoom in a bit. So the week ahead is the European Central Bank meeting will be in the spotlight this week with investors looking for any clue whether the central bank is ready to start reducing its massive PEPP asset purchase program. Now, PEPP, um, in case you don't know, is... Um, uh, the PEPE uh, program allows the ECB to purchase different types of assets in financial markets. By doing this, the prices of those assets go up. By extension, market interest rates go down. All of this supports the economy by making borrowing cheaper for people, businesses and governments. So ultimately, what um, what it's saying is that the, um, the, the PEPP asset purchase program is supporting the economy. So uh, the banks are literally, uh, you know, backstopping the economy. So um, by reducing uh, the PEPP asset purchase program, it's uh, a sign that uh, the eurozone is um, can support itself. It doesn't need financial aid, which is um, potentially a, a good sign of economic growth, which is basically what you want to see in an economy. And that should have an effect of um, actually the currency appreciating, right? So that's the reason um, <clears throat> why this is actually uh, quite an important meeting. Also depends on whether they're hawkish or dovish, but this is the first steps, the first, you know, baby steps really um, to understand what the central bankers are thinking about the economy, right? Um, also, uh, Australia, Canada um, will be deciding on the course of their monetary policy. Elsewhere, key releases include US producer prices and job openings, Canada employment figures, UK monthly GDP, Germany factory orders, and China inflation and foreign trade. So lots going on. Uh, this week in the uh, in in the, what's the market moving potential market moving news. So let's uh, get into the technicals and some deeper fundamentals and starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index technically um, the dollar really has kind of sold off. So um, and this is due to um, uh, some fundamental news. Non farm payrolls actually coming out. Um, uh, pretty much uh, a big miss. So US hiring slows sharply amid Delta complicated Fed taper. So uh, payrolls rose uh, 235,000 in August, short of all forecasts and employment declines um, at dining establishments, retailers. And just to, um, I guess, go over the first uh, paragraph, US hiring downshifted abruptly in August uh, with the smallest jobs gain in seven months, complicating a potential decision by the Federal Reserve to begin scaling back its monetary support by year end. So all central banks, what they're trying to do is say all central banks but all central banks in the western world the ones that and the currencies that we trade are trying to scale back their um uh, quantitative easing and supporting the economy right now the federal reserve and jerome powell the chair um fed chair has come out and said well we need to see employment yeah and jobs grow so that we understand that the economy is you know uh, the economy is growing employment is 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 growing and then we can stop you know supporting the economy by printing money that's you know the the, the whole um, or or buying uh, basically government debt which is basically a QE bond buying right um, but they need to see that employment but because employment missed um, and falls short of all forecasts tapering of those bonds and, and buying the debt um, is being basically now pushed, right? Because the sooner they do it, the stronger the, uh, or the, the, the more that the dollar will appreciate or should appreciate, you know, in the shorter term. And the further, they, or the more they delay that tapering is the, the market has to price in what the dollar is worth. So 
um, what you're seeing and what you've seen, right, is ultimately, you know, this week or last week, I should say, um, you know, uh, a, a bit of a pullback. And I think traders are probably looking at uh, buying the dollar in and around these demand zones, but there was actually a miss, right? So, um, do you expect really the dollar to start to appreciate? Of course, in the short term, anything can happen. But <clears throat> for me, I think the dollar over the medium to long term should want to go to the upside. But I think short term wise, you're going to need you know a catalyst. And until uh, there is a really good jobs number um, that really kind of forces the Fed to taper, um, uh, or look to taper sooner rather than later. I think the dollar may might actually start to be in you know a certain range, and I think we probably could want to range from around this ninety one area, um, you know, until uh, maybe the ninety three. So that being said, um, if you are looking to still be a buyer of uh, the dollar in the short term, just be a bit more cautious because there is probably not great sentiment around uh, the dollar for now. There are some supply zones technically that you could look potentially to take advantage if you do get a pullback to the upside and maybe you want to get short and of course we use the dollar index as it's a measure of dollar strength against the uh, major currencies like the euro the pound the yen um you know uh, uh, basically um to as confluence right so you want to use uh, if prices do come up onto the supply zone up to the supply zone it's 92 area 92 68 area um, and then you're looking for short trades, um, you know, on uh, some dollar crosses, for example, if that's your fundamental bias, because we use fundamentals to establish di uh, directional bias over the medium to long term. But if you still feel that the dollar potentially might be a bargain in and around, you know, these demand zones, then obviously you're looking for, you know, obviously a buying opportunity, but also not necessarily on the uh, dollar index, but just looking at dollar crosses, right? Some, some confluence, if it starts to, you know, um, uh, uh, you start to see some bullish price action and you see maybe that the dollar yen is in, a, is in a bit of a demand zone, then there should be some overall dollar, potential dollar strength where it could just be profit taking from shorts, right? Who knows? But ultimately, um, I think my personal bias on the dollar is a bit tricky at the moment. Sentiment isn't against the dollar. They needed the, the non-farms to really, um, you know, perform or at least meet targets and their forecasts. But for now, um, my focus probably really isn't on going to be on the dollar uh, this week at all. So, um, so yeah, let's see what happens. But ultimately, you're looking for either buy trades or sell trades. I think, from technically, I think this... Um, the, the lower down the 9180 to 9150 area, um, I think is going to be a really nice technical area to look for, um, you know, uh, some potential buyers. But again, you need the, the data to support the narrative, right? The narrative being tapering, the data needs to support that, the data needs to be, you know, positive um, uh, employment and obviously inflation. So moving on to the dollar yen. And obviously, with the dollar selling off, um, we've seen a bit of uh, a bit of a sell off on the dollar yen. The 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 yen isn't doing so well economically anyway. Japan isn't doing so well economically uh, because ultimately you've got um, you know the Bank of Japan Deputy Governor hints at possible economic downgrades. So um, you know Bank of Japan Deputy Governor. Um, signaled that the central bank may revise down its economic assessment at this month's um, policy meeting after a record number of infection cases forced the expansion and extension of a state uh, of emergency. So uh, the yen tends to benefit from a risk off environment, meaning that when there's fear, uncertainty in the market, sorry, in the marketplace, um, but also they are still struggling with um, uh, economically as well. So there's a problem there. So um, again, a bit pre pretty mixed uh, picture. I do probably prefer more upside potential because ultimately, um, I think the US um, um, you know economy should start to grow once they get a grip on the um, on the coronavirus. And um, once they do, I think they'll definitely outperform the uh, Japanese economy. So if you do get, you know, prices come down, I don't really like this area as we've touched these levels and these areas, you know, several times. So I think any fresher areas of demand, you know, the 108.60 and even 
probably preferably even the 108s if it did come all the way down here price to come all the way down here i think that is going to be a really nice buy but that might take a few weeks to come down who knows i think that what would accelerate that is um some more risk off sentiment you know virus spreading uh and um you know supply chain problems but uh ultimately you probably want to look for i uh, well, i say not financial advice of course um i'm looking for more long uh term trades but um, for now, in the short term, um, the, the picture is, is actually quite mixed. So not looking to really look um, trade this uh, pair um, uh, for now. There's no really you know great technical setups anyway. I, I do want to get long on this, but um, I'll probably wait for a deeper pullback. Moving on to the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss again, similar to the do, um, to the dollar yen. Um, really want to see some dollar strength come into play. Um, prices are coming down. Um, they've been really in this range between this uh, 92 area, uh, 92 and this 91. So basically 100 pips where prices have literally just been, uh, I guess what you call a fair auction. Um, some people call it a ranging market, sideways moving market. Um, for me, I, I really like this uh, 109, uh, sorry, 10, 0.905 area for a, a, a long trade um, regardless of how you know short-term sentiment you know is on the dollar I think overall from a medium to long-term perspective the dollar um, you know should be the Swiss franc and this is just due to things like monetary policy for example um, the fact that the Federal Reserve are talking about tapering and potentially hiking rates within the next uh, couple years and the Swiss franc are nowhere near that um, I think it's just literally looking at buys um, so if prices do come down um, to this area, I do want to be a potential buyer um, in this in this zone here. So short term, the dollar could sell off, and then it just basically pushes prices to where we potentially want to be buyers of the dollar for the for the long term. But if you are looking at any kind of short trades, then probably looking at you know say uh, the, uh, just above that 92 area, so nine zero point nine two one eight area would be uh, probably preferable or just above there to look for short trades and again um, buying a Swiss franc really would be if we are in a risk off scenario. Dollar CAD, so Dollar CAD, the CAD didn't have the greatest news um, a couple of weeks ago. I think they missed um, badly with their GDP but um, we've seen obviously uh, Dollar also missed with non-farm payrolls. So we've got a bit of supply here. Um, I think again this, this pair is a tough pair to kind of trade to kind of establish any maybe you know um, long-term direction because you do have two central banks um, that are on the uh, tapering cycle I guess and the hiking cycle but um, short term they've both had some disappointing news so again if you are looking for any kind of buy trades deeper pull back into this zone I think would be decent um, well, actually matter of fact anyway I think from pretty from now I just did make a new high uh, so there's definitely strong demand at this point but um, but let's see what happens with that. Or here would be a decent sell technically. But overall, I think from this pair, um, I'm not convinced fundamentally um, to to either buy or sell. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and uh, I've been buying the New Zealand dollar um, against uh, the Swiss franc. The guys in the in the private mentoring group um, have uh, you know seen that trade really play out. Actually, had a nice uh, uh, ten to one on one position and still swing trading uh, a final position, which uh, should net me a handsome profit. But um, from the uh, interest rate and monetary policy cycle, the, the New Zealand dollar and the RB uh, A is is well ahead. You know when it comes to hiking rates. In fact, their governor have have come out and and said uh, that that they're likely to hike rates. And this is the reason why you're seeing this. You know this massive move, right? You're seeing one central bank pretty much you know saying they're hiking rates, and another one, uh, the Federal Reserve, are you know uh, are just lagging behind the curve a little bit anyway. So and especially with that disappointing news, right? So you've got you're getting divergences, yeah, divergences in monetary policy. Hence the reason why you're seeing this type of price action happen. And again, I say this over and over again: there's no supply zone, there's no technical level that's going to stand in the way of understanding fundamental analysis. Yeah, so you can draw all the supply zones you want. It's not going to you know be a great trade when you understand what is driving prices to the upside.
yeah and this is basically what is driving prices to the upside it's monetary policy um you know interest rates inflation and the market really kind of pricing in um what uh sorry one second yeah pricing in what the value of the new zealand dollar will be once the um rbnz do high crates so this is by the rumor right this is this is by the rumor yeah by the rumor right they bought down here and understanding that they're pricing in what a rate hike is going to be yeah and by the time the rate hike happens the smart money would have already have made their money that's pretty much you know what happens and that's what we do as fundamental analysis traders we're looking for the rumor yeah where the smart money you're going to be buying and then we ride you know the trend you know or uh, to the upside or to the downside so um for me it would be in the short term anyway for sure it would be uh buyers at the moment in this strong trend the, the only way really to kind of get involved in this is if you see a really deep pullback um from that area or you're looking at maybe if you get a, a higher low higher high happen here and then a pull back into that zone before looking at getting uh long if you are looking to get short is now a decent time technically i actually do like this technically there is uh some other confluences in here one of them being um a decent uh, level of support and resistance within that supply and demand zone but um ultimately uh you want to um probably wait for a pullback yeah well that would be my uh my school of thought yep you know there might be an opportunity to short here but not every opportunity is a good opportunity uh pound dollar it's a pound dollar um again being driven by some potential uh short-term negative news for the for the uh, for the dollar so again seeing uh, the, uh, the technicals uh, not play out is not surprising, right? It's not surprising because uh, you've had some, you know, uh, poor news with the uh, with non farms and jobs, right? And tapering and potential tapering. So we've seen prices, you know, go to the upside, but the pound also has its um, uh, potential issues coming and I think they are gonna the government is gonna resolve it so UK's 2.1 million hidden jobs gap looms over the recovery so about 2.1 million UK jobs are still affected by the coronavirus pandemic point into a bumpy economic recovery I think tank claimed and um, uh, in this paragraph it says in a report published Thursday the Institute for Public Policy Research warned of a hidden jobs gap positions that remain furloughed or lost as the government prepares to end its flagship wage support program at the end of the month so end of September is when uh, the government is scheduled to uh, remove the furlough program which is basically paying uh, companies or supporting companies um, um, and uh, certain employees and paying their wages um, and uh, and yeah so the furlough program that's pretty much uh, what it is so um, if the government removed the furlough program it means that businesses are going to have to basically uh, support you know certain um, uh, their uh, their employees and pay their wages but if they're struggling themselves then that might be you know an impossible task mean leading to potential you know um, higher unemployment um, but there was an interesting uh, quote at the end of this we should keep and tweak the furlough scheme until the labor market has genuinely recovered rather than put the lowest earners at an unless and at an unnecessary risk Jung said so pretty much if um, the government ends the furlough scheme um, at the end of the month and businesses aren't ready for that and then they have to start you know laying more people off then employment goes lower unemployment goes higher and then you know there's there's issues there right so um, I think there's a possibility that they could extend the furlough scheme until uh, they do have um, businesses because they've done it once before um, until they until they feel that you know employment is at a certain uh, rate and then they might just say all right then well um, we might remove it you know next year April for example because um, they don't want really high unemployment but with that being said going back to the technicals um, if I think if if the uh, if the U UK government do do something like that uh, and any pullbacks I think you're gonna see you know higher highs you know to to the upside um, 
the pound dollar is a bit of a strange pair as well because you do have two central banks that are looking to again taper and hike rates um not my currency of choice is really not on my list but if i was biased to one or the other it probably be slightly more to the pound um over the over the us dollar as there are uh, bank forecasts a lot of bank forecasts are forecasting higher uh, uh pound um uh, prices exchange rates over the next uh, coming uh, quarter or two moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again benefiting from uh, weak um, dollar prices uh, poor uh, short-term sentiment so uh, what you're seeing now is higher highs higher lows being made um, again european central bank uh, it, this week meeting the euro area inflation may just justify end to ECB crisis mode says not so uh, the PEPP which we spoke about earlier expiration in March 2022 should uh, be reckoned with and September decision should slow purchase pace so again if they slow the purchase pace that should potentially be uh, a positive step towards um, uh, the the euros um, uh, appreciation right and also what you have is um, the ECB seen slowing the pandemic stimulus again as economic recovery advances so the European Central Bank will start to slow down its pandemic bond purchases in the fourth quarter and may not exhaust the whole 1.85 trillion euro program before it extends next year according to economists surveyed at Bloomberg so an improved economic outlook will allow policymakers to reduce the pace of buying from 80 billion euros a month to um, in September to about 50 billion euros in March they said the decision to, to terminate the program then as currently planned is only expected at the end of the year so um, with the dollar recently not doing so great and with the with you know Europe potentially starting to you know kickstart their economy and uh, reduce the reliance on the central bank you could see potentially higher um, uh, euro in the short term so any pullbacks don't know whether they'll be this you know big of a pullback a couple of hundred maybe a hundred or two pips um 100 you know 150 pips or so i'm not sure whether you'll get that but if you do um in the short term and the european central bank are maybe more hawkish than dovish then i think the euro is would be a decent buy um in at least in the short term i think the limits of the move may be up to maybe this 119 8 uh 11975 area if not then you're looking at at least the 1 to 150 area before potential um you know short trades and again that would really be because the US and the Federal Reserve are still ahead from a monetary policy perspective um then the European Central Bank, the European Central Bank aren't even thinking about hiking rates whereas the Federal Reserve are so decent um uh, short-term trades positive for the euro but i think overall long term um until that you know that narrative shifts or there's uh, the data you know continues to come out poor for the dollar and positive for the euro um i think the uh, the path of this resistance is still to you know the downside uh moving on to the euro yen and euro yen uh a decent buy again we've seen positive euro data come out so we're seeing again higher euro prices more demand zones being made so if you do want to be a buyer of the euro against the yen this is going to be a really nice zone nice fresh area of demand if you're looking to get short i think now is actually decent but again you probably need a bit more of a catalyst either the euro european central bank coming out as quite dovish um, or risk off coming into play where the yen benefits in that environment uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar again benefiting from potential um, uh, dollar weakness, but also a bit of a turnaround potentially in the Australian dollar, um, the Australian economy. So uh, for now, they, they may come out of lockdowns, and I've, I've been saying for a while that once the Australian economy gets going, I think the Australian dollar is going to be a really good buy. So for me, any pullbacks into demand zones are going to be, um, for me, a buy, not necessarily against this, against this currency pair, probably more against the, the, the Aussie yen or something like that. But um, I think any pullbacks 
you know it's going to be a really nice buy again this is proof of value pov proof of value what does that mean it means that the this was an absolute bargain for the australian dollar we know that because prices have proved it right so if prices ever come back down to these areas here these demand zones yeah you may look for potential buy trades but again is the us dollar the best uh, currency uh, to buy the australian dollar against um or, or, or sell the, uh, the US dollar against the uh, Australian dollar, then I would say probably not. You want a weaker currency, and that weaker currency is the Aussie yen. So the yen potentially going into you know more lockdowns, I think a nice pullback is going to be really nice. It's going to be really, really nice for a potential buy. As long as risk remains at least more on than off. Right, I think these areas here are going to be really, really nice for the 80 round numbers. Going to be nice for a, a potential buy. Um, I'm going to remove this supply zone, and uh, again, I'll probably say looking at that area there for any kind of short trades. But again, you probably want more of a catalyst um, uh, to, to you know, some risk off catalyst to you know really kind of you know push prices to the downside but for me my overall long-term bias is to the upside so i will be literally waiting for pullbacks in and around these zones here before looking at getting long and finally gold so gold um didn't really move much this week we're in that tight range and then the disappointing news around uh, non-farms push prices of gold higher uh, tapering being obviously delayed uh, that's positive for gold but uh, this interesting. This is a very, very interesting level. Um, so let's see what happens. If there's any kind of positive dollar news, you could see a bit of a sell-off. Or what I'm probably expecting to happen is a bit of a stop hunt above the level, and then prices go to the downside. But again, that stop hunt would have to be driven by um, uh, some dollar uh, positive news. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, stop hunts, what's that got to do with supply and demand? That's beyond the scope of uh, this supply and demand video. It's something that we trade, um, an extra strategy that we trade in the uh, private mentoring group. Um, but it all comes under uh, the supply and demand um, um, uh, category. So ultimately what we're looking for, um, if you're looking at risk off, yeah, so risk off, you're looking at probably higher gold prices as well as understanding inflation as well. If inflation keeps going to the upside, um, that's going to have a positive effect on gold because gold is a hedge against inflation, right? Um, but uh, if you do see some uh, a bit of a pullback and you want to be a buyer of the dollar, um, one of the things that you can do is actually, you know, start start to short, um, sorry, short, short gold by buying the dollar. So actually, in fact, um, getting short again right now may be uh, a decent short, but ultimately, if you're looking to buy uh, gold based off of um, risk off, then you're looking at you know pullbacks to demand. If you're looking to if risk is on, and the U.S. economic recovery is still intact, then you're actually probably looking at say probably, but you're best to look to for potential short trades at supply anyways um that's it for this week i hope you have a great week and um a profitable week if you don't it's all right um not everybody has a profitable week as long as you know you have good risk reward trades ultimately um you know and um, you stick to the plan you, know, you should uh, be profitable in the medium to long term so guys have a great trading week and speak to you all soon